York, New York, big city of dreams. I'm coming, coming, I'm coming straight out. out. New York, New York, big city of dreams. are back yes yes after a week hiatus yeah happy new year my friend my, my scorpio brethren what it, yes yes what it is what it is yeah if you don't know this is jealous from nick of time show here giving you that nick's talk just in the nick of time and i have old faithful here with me today ryan g in the building <laughs> that's right that's right holding it down yes sir for the kot show uh no kathy no edson today kathy says she's coming next week Hopefully. Hopefully. She's supposed to be coming this week. <laughs> and she ain't show up. And she so. ain't show up. <laughs> she missing. Yeah, we coming for you, Kathy. We coming for you. Word. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully we will have the first lady of KOT here next week. But um, I'm in a good mood. It is the new year, damn it. Yes, and the Knicks finally got a damn win. Word. Clap it up for that. New year, new Knicks. You know what I mean? But not too new, because we don't want you to win too much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, even though the Knicks won, I know most Knicks fans are gonna be like. Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know most Knicks fans want to tank. So I mean. <laughs> yeah, but you, you you have to realize the new NBA rules, Knicks fans. New NBA rules. <laughs> like, if you're first or second in 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 in, in the tankathon, right? If mm. you have the first or second less wins, least amount of wins, you still have the same amount... How, how am I writing this right? If you are the top two losers of the NBA, yeah, the percentage points, you're... Help me out here, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what you're trying to say is that the... The two teams, the two worst teams in the NBA. There you go. The two worst teams in the NBA. They have the same percentage chance of getting them the first pick in the there NBA draft. There you go. Draft. Exactly. And That's then, it. Yeah, and then the third pick is like what, like percentage points off like like point zero, like point seven. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Third, yeah, third place you have point, a point seven percent difference than the second and first place. So, chill, guys, chill. It's not, it's not all that bad. Really, <laughs> what we really want to be, really. Is top, I mean, when I say top, I mean worst. Yeah. Bottom yeah. three, bottom four. Exactly. Is really what you really, really want to be. Yeah. Because the bottom four teams in the Tankathon are only separated by percentage points, not even a full percent. Yeah. Point, point three, point seven percent. Once you get to that fifth spot. Yeah, that's when it drops a bit. It drops a bit. It drops from 14% to 13.4 or something to 10 you don't want to be... Mm. Yeah, so exactly. that's when that drop-off happens. So we are still in a good place for Zion. Yes. We're still here. Or Barrett. Or Barrett. Either one. <laughs> either one. Either one you want. Even though I've been doing a little bit more research, and I'm like, I like this Lamont kid. Oh, you, I'm talking about the dude from Murray State? Yeah. The point guard? Yeah, he looks he, Yeah, he, he looks, looks high. Looks, yeah, he looks pretty good. Yeah. He looks high if, you if you're looking at point guards. If, you, if you're figuring <laughs> who's going to be here next year, you don't yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. Yeah. So, um, shout out this week's Knicks finally got a win, and we're in a good-ass mood. Hell yes. But you know what? There's a lot of in-between time, delays this week. You know, we don't, we don't have a, like, a, I feel like last year, we had a bunch of games, like, back of the, every other day. Yeah, back I know. Back. Yeah, this year is, like, a game, like, once every, like, two three days or something like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, like, you know, for as a fan, you're, like, you don't want to, like, you're kind of sad, like you're getting less basketball. Uh -huh. For me though, is is is, I have a little bit of a mental break, so I'm not complaining too much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> me, me too. Like me too. Like it, 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 it's like it's like it was like early in the season. It's like I have to write every other day. Yeah. And now recently, it's like oh, I get like a couple of days off or what? Exactly. <laughs> and I do a post game. I do post games every night after every game. So now you can get like a game or two off. Oh, it's not that bad. Exactly. I'll take a little breather. Word. But um, you know what? When you have those games off, that's when the writer's getting writing. Yep. Right, right? Most definitely. Right, Ryan. Ryan's a writer. He know. <laughs> that, that, that downtime, that, that gives the writers an opportunity to come up with, with a lot of BS. Exactly. <laughs> so all the things you was thinking about, but you, had, you didn't have the time to write it down because you, they had to write those game recaps. Yep. Mm -hmm. They start getting into, the, into their, their bag. 
Yep. They start they, they yeah, they really start getting into their ponder bag and start pondering trades and best list and worst list and all types of stuff like Exactly. And how and how there's a possibility that KP could be signed by the Nets and stuff like that. Come on, bro. <laughs> and that was some bull. She like, come on, <laughs> Stefan, Stefan Bonnie. Come on, dog. The the Nets aren't getting Kristaps, dog. Like, the, the road to Kristaps being a net is a very, very... A very difficult road. Difficult road. <laughs> like, he's going to turn down a qualifying offer and then take... What's, what's the qualifying offer? For like, $3 million? Yeah. Dog, that's not happening. <laughs> they, that's, but, that's not happening. But, the, but, the, but, but I think what Bonnie was trying to say was, like, it's only to become an unrestricted free agent in 2020, but still, it's like, do you really want to turn down like five years, 157 million? And we can I'm match. Saying? We can match. It's like, come on, dog. Whatever. <laughs> like, if, if if anything, to be real, if KP was to leave, it wouldn't be this season. <laughs> yeah. It would be down the road. It'd be like maybe next season or season. I, I don't. But it's not gonna be this season. Nah, definitely not. Definitely not. So ch- yo, so yo, so so. Bruh. Chill, st- chill, but I know you're in your downtime body, but chill, dog. <laughs> chill, like you don't need to do, you don't need to do that. You don't need to get all these Knicks fans hyped thinking that KP is leaving this season. That's not exactly, happening. Exactly, but you see, this is what happens when a team is doing terrible. Because when a team is doing bad, all these riders start conjuring up things just to like make the fan base even more like Word, antsy yo. than they already are. You know what I'm it's saying? Like easy, dog, easy. And and Ryan was saying even the Nets, the Nets. Beat writers were saying it's not possible. Yeah, they were saying it's very be, unlikely. Yeah, exactly. That KP joins Brooklyn because that was the big story. Yeah, allegedly. If you want to, if you call for fake news, big. But a lot of stuff was happening. Uh, oh my! Oh man! Yeah, my guy Frank, man, my guy Frank. Tending down. Messed up his ankle last game. Yeah, left the game in a boot. <sighs> yeah, that's some news that was happening this week. Also, the big news we really want to talk about, though, is Enos Cantor, man. Yup. The downtime produced some Enos Cantor news a little bit. So basically, we all know last episode, if you were watching. Hold on, hold on. Before I even get into that. Clap it up for us. <laughs> a thousand views on YouTube. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> our most the most views we had on YouTube so far. Yes, thank you, thank, thank you, you, people out there. Thank, thank you, you, people. And yeah. For those guys who have huge YouTube followings, that's like nothing to you. Yeah. <laughs> right, because you know y'all get like hundred thousand, uh, yeah, two thousand exactly. on a bad day. Yeah, but but we get in there. Wait for us, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for us. <laughs> hey. We happy. So thank you, YouTube. Yes. Back to the news, though. Enos Cantor, right? We Last week, we talked about the lineups, right? Mm-hmm. And um, we talked about Luke Cornett. Yeah. Possibly being to the starting lineup. Remember that conversation, Ryan? Yes. I, I, I remember that just like it was yesterday. Yeah. And it was like, we, we all see that Enos Cantor is a liability on the defensive end. Yep. In general... You feel like you can't really win with all offensive players on the floor all the t- all the time. You need a sense of defense. Yeah, and it was kind of saying it might be time to start Luke Cornett, mm-hmm. but you you were kind of worried about it because you know you don't want to give Luke Cornett the starting job off the jump. Yeah, even though it seems like it should happen because the defense is so bad, we need some side of defense. Exactly, and we already know he'll be an upgrade over Edis Cantor. Yeah. So, lo and behold, after that episode dropped, I think Luke Cornett starts the next game. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> News came out that the lineup change was happening. Everything was on the table. Luke Cornett starts. Mm-hmm. And he's been playing pretty well for yeah. the most part. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Um, do you have any stats? On Luke Cornett? Yeah, I don't know if you have any stats on Luke Cornett. But I feel like Luke Cornett comes into the game. Mm-hmm. I think he had a game. Well, first of all, when he first got into, when he first came up with the Knicks, he had a game versus the Hornets. I think he had like 20-something points, like 26 points. 
in that game. What was it? The Knicks win over the Hornets. Yes. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, like he came off the bench and, and like he was lighting it up. He for was three. Yeah, yeah, he was lighting it up for three, and you're like, wow. You start to see what it could look like when KP comes back and there's more spacing and there's a guy who can actually play defense and it's like, whoa, this 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 could be something. Yeah. And <clears throat> because of that, I don't, I don't know if you found the found it or not. Because of that, uh, Cantor's job was in jeopardy. Yeah. Do you have a stats? Do you have Luke's stats? Well, I don't have Luke's stats per se, but um, this matter of fact, this stat is from Nick's Film School. Okay. On Instagram, and it was basically comparing when Cantor's in the starting lineup with Vonley, Kevin Knox, Tim Hardaway Jr., and Moutier, mm-hmm. and when Cornette's in the starting lineup with those same cast of players. Right. Now, when Cantor's in there with those cast of players, the Nick's offensive rating is one hundred and one point two. Okay. Defensive rating is 117.6. Mm. And the net is negative 16.4. Mm. Now, when Cornette is in the starting line with those same cast of players, the offensive rating is 130.4. Mm. The defensive rating is 103.6. That's big. And the net is plus 26.8. Positive net rating. Something you don't really see from Knicks lineups this season. Exactly. But, I, you, but you also got to take into account that with Cantor, there's like much more, you know, there's much more data points because Cantor's played way more games in the starting lineup than Cornet has. Right. So so that could, so that kind of, you know, alters it a bit. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> like um when we had our famous all-defensive Fizz Kids lineup. Yeah. Where I, I'm not sure where that, where that lineup stands right now, mm-hmm. but that for a while... That had the that netted the biggest net rating yeah. of any starting lineup s- so far. But then we started losing some games, and they broke up the band, and we never seen that starting lineup again. Yeah, but it was a sample size, sample size, nonetheless. But um, needless to say, Cornette has been was playing well at least for the most part. He was playing well. Yeah. The coach decides to start him, and what does Cantor do? Throw a hissy fit on Twitter. Bruh. Bruh, man, what do you... Come on, Cantor. Come on, Cantor. Like, he goes to Twitter. He puts up the emoji. I don't know what this... What is this emoji called? The whatever emoji? It, 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 it's, like, it's like the shrug emoji. Yeah, like, the shrug emoji. Eh, emoji. Yeah, That's yeah, what it, I call it. it, 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 it <laughs> to me, it's like someone saying, like, you know, whatever. You know, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, or I don't know. <laughs> oh, yo, I'm so tired of Cantor... Going to Twitter. How do you feel about the Cantor Twitter situation, dog? The Cantor Twitter situation? Yeah, like... I mean, like... Pe- at least nowadays, social media is, like, always an outlet for players to go to, you know, to voice their, you know, displeasure or to, like, voice their opinions or whatnot. But I just feel like in in this, in this situation, like, Cantor shouldn't be voicing his his displeasure on Twitter. Like, he should have did what he did which was reported by the news, I think, what, last week or something like that, where he went to the GM? Yeah. And discussed his, um, you know, discussed his um, displeasure with the role he currently has on the team and saying how he's disappointed with the Knicks losing and blah, blah, blah. That's exactly. Like, I don't... Listen, man, I don't blame Cancer for being upset that he's losing his starting spot. I don't. Yeah. It's a contract here for Cantor, and he's used to being on a team that wins. He's yeah. been in OKC for how many years? They've gone to the playoffs every damn year. Exactly. So I understand as a competitor, you want to be on the floor. I be playing pickup ball. I want to be on the floor. And as a guy who has a lot of money to lose and to show your worth, you have to be on the floor, I also want to be on the floor. Yeah. So I understand <laughs> I understand how he feels. Mm-hmm. It should be kept in house. Yeah, it should be. That's for Steve. That's for Mill. Like, to, and that's the reason why I'm like, yo. I was like, it might. I was thinking in my man. It's like, yo, it might be time to move him. I'm not like, it might be like, mm-hmm. you you don't want a distraction on the team. And we're we're already losing enough. And the funny thing too is that when that report came out, they said Cantor didn't ask for a trade. He just voiced his displeasure. Yes, exactly, exactly. So. Oddly enough, when that happened, I was on I was doing um 
post game live show, and I was saying the way this team works mm-hmm. is they over communicate. Cantor has been showing his ass for a while now on Twitter. Mm-hmm. So I'm and in my mind I'm like you know they're going to talk to him at some point. Yeah. Because it's beginning it's getting to be a distraction. And lo and behold, the next day after I said that, news comes out that Cantor talked to Steve Mills. I mean Scott Perry. Yeah. And they talked about that situation. And Scott Perry said he the people know that Cantor is a good basketball player. Yeah. But they need Cantor to be a good teammate at this point. Yes. Some guys will say, well, we also want Cantor to play defense. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gun chats for the guy. It's true. We do want Cantor to play defense. Yeah. But we also don't want you to be a distraction. Exactly. We don't. We like we need you to keep that stuff in-house because the mm-hmm. NY media is a beast. Uh-huh. And, and don't get me wrong, like, I understand where Cantor's coming from, you know. It's your money year. Yeah. You, you want to be on the court. You want to perform. You want to make sure that you put yourself in the best position to earn a big contract when next free agency comes. But Me too. I want the dough. Yeah, exactly. Like, but but Cantor, I think, in, in my opinion, Cantor got to realize where the Knicks are right now. Like, when Fisdale came in, the goal was to win games. Right. The, the Knicks are trying, but they're not winning any games. So it's like it comes to a point where it's like, okay, if we're not winning any games, we might as well just throw the young guys out there and have them play. And then the veterans could get, you know, so they could still get their minutes, but we just want to develop these young guys more as a, as the a, as a bigger priority because we're not winning any games. We're definitely not winning games. And you know what? Like, that was um, Knicks fans' biggest issue last season with Jeff Hornacek, too. Mm-hmm. They feel like, okay, we're not winning. Why isn't Frank playing more minutes? Yeah. Why isn't such as playing more minutes? And you know what? I'm a, um... <laughs> I'm going to applaud some of these guys, too, because we're talking about Cantor kind of showing out, but there's other guys on his team who aren't getting minutes. Yeah. And they're in just as bad a position as Cantor is, but they're just being professional. Yeah. So shout out to Courtney Lee. Yep. Yeah. For being professional, um, he I even read something that said he's having you know he's he he of course he wants to play this is a different role for him but he's finding joy in doing things like getting Kevin Knox to be better yeah and we all oh and shout out to Kevin Knox oh of course Kevin Knox <laughs> rookie of the month for December yes sir. Courtney Lee expressed how good he felt that, you know, he felt like he's a part of that. And also, shout out to Lance Thomas, too, the veteran. Mm-hmm. But um, also Trey Burke, too. Yeah, I was just about to say Trey Burke. Trey Burke, more so than anybody. I feel like Trey Burke and Cancer are probably in the most sensitive position out of everybody on his team. Mm-hmm. And... Burke more so out of anyone because Burke has never had a payday. Yeah, true that. Burke is only making like a million or something like that. I mean, I wish I could only make a million. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're also not in the NBA. We're, but we're also not in the NBA. <laughs> but Burke is in there making a million. So to me, Burke has the most to gain from getting playing time. Yeah. Cantor right now is making $18 million. I'm not sure how much he's going to make in his next contract, but I don't think it's going to be that much lower. Like, I think it still really? might be double figures. It might, still I mean, might be 10 or 8, 8 I mean, the lowest. I mean, like, at the end of the day, like, he's he's still a double-double machine. Like, right. It doesn't matter whether he starts games or the, he comes off the bench. He's still going to give you a consistent double-double. Yeah, exactly. So, But shout-out to Burke, too, because he has the most to to lose and gain from not playing. Mm-hmm. And he's been super professional about exactly. it. Exactly. Like you don't hear a peep out of Burke's mouth about, you know, not getting playing time or getting or or you know, or saying like he should be getting playing time, getting these DMPs or whatnot. Like you don't hear nothing from Burke, period. The matter of fact, uh shout out to Mike uh Brock, Berknikoff? I think that's it. Mike Berknikoff. Because he was saying like he interviewed Burke and 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 Courtney and 
Burke was pretty much saying, even after not playing, mm-hmm. he wants to still be here with the team next season. Wow. That... I kind of shocked me. <laughs> that must mean it's either he really loved the city or he really loved Fisdale. Is no, he <laughs> said he really liked... He said he's quoted as saying he really likes it here. Yeah. And he really wants to stay. And... I think the, there was a question that asked. It was like, do you feel like because you're not being prioritized in playing time that you feel like you might not be part of the future of this team? Mm-hmm. And he responded, yeah. I kind of, you kind of get, get that feeling. Yeah. And it's human nature to feel that way. But at the same time, so he feels like there's still a chance that he can still be part of the future mm-hmm. of the team. So he's just, his approach is, I'm going to stay ready and wait my turn. Yeah. And I'm just like, Damn. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. And he's going to get a turn now with Franklin Lakina being yeah, injured. exactly. He's going to have a shot because it's a pull tendon. That's, that is, I don't know what... I'm not a doctor, so I don't know how good or bad it sounds. All, all, all I know is that they said that he walked out in a boot, and usually when a player walks out in a boot, it's exactly. not... Exactly. He's going to be out for at least a while. Uh, yeah, to me, a boot means weeks. Yeah, like... A at, week at, or two. Yeah, like at least, yeah. At least. So, Burke is going to get his shot. I... I know some Knicks fans don't mess with Burke. <clears throat> I still kind of feel like Burke has some kind of like tiger killer instinct thing mm-hmm. that that is there, and he just needs a consistent role in playing time to be able to get that out. Yeah. And I still think he has something to prove. I still think he has a, a, a game. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm curious to see how Burke responds. Yeah, and also I think in Burke's in Burke's situation too, like at the end of the day, like right now the Knicks have a lot of point guards, but we don't, but we don't really know who's coming back next year or not anyway. So for all we know, there might be an opening for Burke to come back on another year there, contract there, next season. There might be. It's like it's like is Burke or Moody at this point, right? Mm-hmm. You you figure is Burke or Moody? Like here's here's the thing though, like and. It's funny because you have I have all these topics written down yeah. and then we, we start talking and then it just takes on a life of its own. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> so all the stuff we're talking about is real is really straight freestyle. Yeah. But um, pretty much when you think about Burke and Moody, right? Mm-hmm. And you who was gonna be here when it's all you really like you said we really you really don't know exactly. You would think that the Knicks have all these young pieces here. So they can develop them, not so they can trade all of them. Yeah, you would think they want to develop them because you really want to see which one of these guys are going to be here long term. Yeah. So, in my eye, it's obvious that Fizz has a man crush on Moody. Yeah, and rightfully so. Moody has performed. Yeah, of course. He slipped. He slipped a little bit. Yeah, recently. Recently, yeah. he hasn't been finishing at the rim as much as he can. Yeah. And his percentages dropped down all considerably. Yeah, but but I mean, at the end of the day, he's still putting up pretty consistent stats. It's just he's just not doing it as efficiently as he was earlier. Yeah. Uh, like in December, like he's not as efficient. The thing yeah, with Moody, the thing with Moody is he's running the team okay for the most part, with the exception of the Nuggets game mm-hmm. and another game where I felt like he was chucking a little bit too much. You know what I'm saying? The Nuggets game is different because that was like a homecoming yeah, for him. Yeah, exactly. And, and he's going he's gonna to want to show out and be yeah. like, you know, this is what you're missing out on. Right. <laughs> and even that game when he was chucking, he had nine assists. Yeah. Right? But he was chucking at the end of the game when mm-hmm. I felt like he shouldn't pass more. But that's besides the point. Yeah. But um, you figure they're developing these guys to at least give these guys another look. Mm-hmm. But who knows? Who knows? Moody could be shipped. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at Courtney Lee because Courtney Lee is definitely top priority to leave. You would think, out of everyone. Yeah, probably. I mean, he he is a veteran guard that can probably help out a winner right now. Right. And he's not getting any playing time with the Knicks. But even though we even though we're gonna get to it later because we have it as a topic, but I do feel like the Knicks' priority would probably be to move Tim Hardaway Jr.'s contract first, mm. in my opinion. But we're gonna get to it later because we have it like down on on the topic list. Right. Right. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. And you would think it would either be Burke or Moody to be packaged. Yeah. Because of those guys might have some value. Exactly. And 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 you know what? Let me let me touch on this a bit right now. Okay. 
because the last episode we had, I was reading the comments. Listen, don't don't get into the YouTube comments, though. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Please don't do it. You be fighting this. You be fighting it. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, I know, but I feel like I got to kind of explain myself a little bit. Okay. Because people want to act like I'm crazy. I mean, I mean, I mean. <laughs> I, I mean... I'm, she. <laughs> I'm, I'm, go, I'm going to touch on Tim Hardaway Jr. later. Okay. But, but I'm just going to talk about Moutier right now. Okay. Because people think that I'm crazy about packaging Moutier, but this is why I'm saying it would make sense to package Moutier. Because if Moutier continues to perform at a good level, next year he has a 12.8 million kicker. It's not a guarantee he's going to sign with the Knicks for less. There's a possibility that he might go somewhere else and get more money. So, in that case, if Moutier has value now... Yeah, you're talking about the 12.8 cap hole. Exactly. I so, feel like he would give us a discount, though, truth be told, but go ahead. Uh, yeah, but I'm just saying it's not a guarantee, though. Right. So, it's like, if he has value now, why not use him as a trade bait where it's like we can move one of our bigger contracts and put him in the deal so it gives the team incentives to take on one of our bigger contracts... Or we get, like, a draft pick or something in return for him. And people want to think I'm crazy for doing that. I'm like, nah, it's logic. <laughs> and right now, it's funny if because if you talk about trading Moutier two months ago, everybody's on board. Yeah. Now, you look at at least Instagram. Mm-hmm. I haven't checked Twitter. If you look at Instagram, there's people are split down the middle now on trading Moutier. Yeah. And, you know, that's a testament to Moutier's work that he put in. Because, you know, you, you play well, then people don't want to trade you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. But it's funny because we all, we, all this is... I, I started, we started talking about cancer, right? Let me mm -hmm. reel this back in a little bit. So, um... Man, you know what? Somebody is still waiting in the rent in the in the wind, right? Uh huh. Cause the team in general has been playing a little bit better when Luke Cornett was in is in the game. Mm hmm. Cantor is coming off the bench, and we still have money, money, make it, Mitch. Yes, money, Mitch, in the wings, waiting. Yup. To pounce. <laughs> <laughs> And it's funny, too, because my man's been out for a while, and he still leads all rookies in block shots per game. Talk about it. Talk about it, man. Still leading the lead. So, here's the tough question, dog. Mm -hmm. And Mitch comes back. Yeah. You got Mitch. Mm -hmm. You got Luke. Yeah. You got Cantor. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You coach Fizz. Yeah. What are you going to do, dog? Who's getting the minutes now? You see, this, this is where it gets tricky because it's like, okay, with Cornette in the starting lineup, the Knicks are doing good, right? Yeah. So you're not going to really move out Cornette right now. Cornette's going to stay there. But you know that you have to develop Mitch. Yeah. You can't have Mitch just sitting there on the bench, you know, not getting any playing time. Right. But now you also have a disgruntled player in Canton now who wants to start. Right. But he's a veteran, and it's like you have to look out for Cantor as well. Yeah. And I know trade rumors are going around saying that teams are looking to get Cantor. Mm hmm And at this moment, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, the Knicks may have to consider trading Cantor. Because I think a higher priority has to go to Cornette and Mitch to develop them since they're younger players. And right now, as I said, the Knicks are like 10 and 29. Like, they're not going anywhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm thinking, so I'm thinking now, the Knicks may really have to listen to these offers, which they are, and see if they can probably get something for Cantor in return and ship him somewhere where he can probably help a team that's trying to hit, make the playoffs or something like that. That's a fact. Yeah. That's a fact. And it's like, so at this point, it seems like it's inevitable that we're in trouble. And when I say we're in trouble, I mean the team camaraderie mm -hmm. and the media. Like, you, you see, I can see the firestorm coming. In one week or two, with the trade deadline approaching. Yeah. 
Boy, baby, that the, the news is gonna be on fire. For real. <laughs> so yo, everybody follow me right. Follow us right now on Instagram, the Nigga Time Show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on Instagram and Twitter, the KOT Show. To keep so we can keep you guys up to date because you know rumors are starting to come. They're gonna come. Exactly. Like I, I already have a feeling because part of being the um the Knicks beat writer for TSJ one on one sports, like I'm gonna have to cover those trades as well. And I just have a feeling like towards the trade deadline, there's gonna be like crazy rumors popping oh, up. It's gonna and, be all over the place. And then like and then like I'm gonna have to probably cover them. So y'all gonna have to watch out because I'm gonna probably be writing like crazy around that yeah, time. Yeah, man. Yeah, man, and just watch out for Enos can watch Enos's Twitter. Yeah. Now, yo, keep this in mind. Ever since Enos talked to to the God, Team Wakanda, <laughs> Scott Perry, you ain't heard she Twitter silent, dog. Yep. So you don't hear nothing from Twitter. You see no emojis, no praying hands, no no. None of, none of none of those the confusion no, no dot 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 no memes no mean n- none of that yo hey, Kanta came off the bench last game Twitter silent yep so shout out to Scott Perry you had to lay down that hammer dog don't 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 do that again don't exactly do that. keep it in house keep that in house so do you feel like Luke should start over you still, so you feel like Luke should start over Mitch yeah at the moment. I mean, if as long as Luke's performing, he deserves that he deserves a starting position. I kind of feel with you on that one too. Like the only thing is, Mitch still statistically right now is our best defender. Yeah, defensive, at the center position. Yeah, defensive big. Yeah, Luke gives you okay defense. Yeah. More, more of an offensive threat. More offensive threat. Like that night when we played Utah. Who? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that night when we played Utah with Gobert getting all those damn lobs. Yeah, that was crazy. That one was a night when. Money, money, make it, Mitch. That's a night. Yeah, he would have w- been more effective. Yeah, because the more Bill Luke, I love Luke. And you know, I, I you know, Fizz talked about his lack of athleticism and how he can't jump over an envelope. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it reminds me of when I said, uh, remember when I said uh, Willie Hernan Gomez couldn't jump over a paper bag? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> remind me of that. Remind me of that comment. Yeah, but yeah, he, he does not really athletic. Yeah, and a guy who's that mobile and that long is hard for him to keep up. Yeah. <laughs> and you figure if someone like Mitch, who has long arms, is a lot more reactive, he would be able, he has the tools, he has the raw tools able to disrupt that lob a lot more effectively. Yeah. So you would you would hope, like, a game like that, he would probably be a lot more effective than Luke. But um, I'm going, I'm agreeing with you, though. Mm-hmm. At least for start, I feel like Mitch, even though he has, he might have an edge on defense, I feel like the foul trouble might get into the, in the way. Yeah. I feel like he's not offensively as polished, and I think he should be off the bench. Yeah, and yeah, and and, and then again, like he's just coming off an injury as well, so you got to give him time to get his legs back and all that stuff to be for you. Because consider like moving him into the starter lineup and things like that. Yeah, exactly. And even with Enos, can and, and it's at the end of the day, there's still a danger, dog. There's yeah. still a danger because if we move Enos Cancer, mm-hmm. and then Miss Strange's ankle again, then what? Yeah, that too. Von um, Lee getting mad minutes, and Von Lee gets fi- gets into foul trouble quick as hell too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's why that's why I say the Knicks probably got to look to the G League. And, yeah, and probably bring up Isaiah Hicks, who's who is performing well with um the Westchester Knicks at the moment. So, boy, shout out to Isaiah Hicks putting that work in. Yes, you know, shout out to Cody Emanuel. Uh, you know who you are, the the, the captain of the Isaiah Hicks fan club. <laughs> <laughs> oh man Recru- he's recruiting he's recruiting yeah <laughs> and I we have mentioned Isaiah Hicks three times on this program I know you happy Cody <laughs> <laughs> oh man so um yo Knox too I wanted to, yo what do you think Knox it's crazy that Knox has one rookie of the month uh-huh. after being crapped on for so long yeah I know it's funny <laughs> yeah like th- you know what I love about Knox, man? The floater, dog. 
Or the floater? I love the floater. The floater. Like, I mm-hmm. love how he has an unstoppable move already. Yeah. And he's mixing it up with the floater, mm-hmm. with with the three-point shot, and the aggressiveness, too. Yeah, no. I, I just love the fact that he's not just selling for threes anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm, I, I, just, I like the fact that he's actually driving it to the rim sometimes. You know, if he sees a, if he sees a big man in the lane, he'll float it up. Yeah. You know, if he sees an opening to the basket, he'll yam it on somebody. Yamming. So, I mean, like, I, I like that part of his game. You know, like, at, at least I see he's developing. You know what I'm saying? And can you imagine, yo, what if... Some people don't like Zion. Some people say they don't want Zion here because they don't feel like he'd be a good mix with Pay-P. You, you see, this is, this is what I don't get about people because it's like... There comes a moment where it's like... It's, it's like that saying when... um. Bobby Knight said when um the I think it was the eighty four draft when Michael Jordan was available and clearly Michael Jordan was the best player in the draft and I think the Blazers already had I think Clyde Drexler at the time right so they weren't looking for another guard they were looking for a big man and Bobby Knight was like Jordan's the best player in the draft you know so it's like you draft him and you play him at center then you know yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying <laughs> at that point especially this year's draft where it seems like the consensus is there's a big drop off after the first two spots. Yeah, you gotta take him. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, like, who, who, who in the NCAA is like on Zion's level? Probably besides Barrett. You know what Nobody. I'm saying? Nobody. So it's like if you have like one of the top two picks of the draft, and Zion is available or Barrett's available, you gotta take either one of those. Yeah, dudes. man. I'm taking Zion. Zion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm taking either one. Like yo, uh, if, if if I hear if I if the draft comes, I hear the Knicks pick either one. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Yeah. <laughs> I, you make it work. Exactly. You make it work. I would put Knox at shooting guard. For real. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I like work. Knox. You working on your lateral quickness. You are now shooting guard. Exactly. There you go. Zion small forward. KP power forward. Yeah, we're gonna make it work. We gonna make Von Lee's in there. And yeah. then knocks you shooting guard. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. I'm with it. There you go. That's the that's the that's the long line. That's the long and the bully lineup right there. For real. So I will go with that. But anyway, <clears throat> I know we talking about lineups, and we don't even know who's gonna be the point guard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that too. We don't know. Is it gonna be Manuel Moutier? Is it, is it uh, gonna be Burke? Is it gonna be Burke? Or is or it gonna, is it gonna be, be Frank? Frank? Or are we gonna get another guy in here from free yeah. agency? Who knows? But I do know this. Frank has been struggling, mm-hmm. and he made it on a list. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> this list is mm-hmm. called, what is it called? The it is, It's the five worst sophomores, I think, along those lines. Yes, the five <clears throat> worst sophomores list Yeah. of the NBA. Frank Nilakina was the first guy mentioned yeah. on this list. Along with, I think, Josh Jackson. Den Smith Jr. Den Smith Jr., who a lot of people think don't deserve to be on that list. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel um, like I'm missing somebody Mar- else. Markel Fultz. Markel Fultz. And um, who's the fifth guy? Josh Mark Malik Monk. Yeah, Malik Monk, Malik. yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know what's funny about it, too? Two guys on that list, Knicks fans... Wanted over Frank Nilakina. Yeah, I and, was and, thinking and, and, that. <laughs> and, 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 and then both of those players end up on a list for yeah, five worst I, I, sophomores right now. I thought that that gave me a little chuckle too. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so yo, this is my question to you: is, Does he deserve to be on the list? First of all, well, let me read um a bit from the article, and then I'm going to um say my opinion on the topic. Okay. So. Long-term potential earned Frank Nilakina a pass last year after he averaged just 5.9 points and 3.2 assists per game on 36.4% shooting. Mm. Based, on the 30, based on the first 34 games of his sophomore season, the expiration date on that pass has been moved up. Yeah. He's shooting worse this year from the field, 34.9%. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. <laughs> and the three-point arc, 30 point, 30%. Oh. While averaging 6.2 points per game and 2.6 assists per game, roughly the same amount of minutes per game. 
He's the oh. only, I'm back. He, he's the only NBA player with at least twenty minutes per game and a true shooting percentage of under forty five percent in back to back seasons. Yikes! And um, I'm not going to read everything because it's pretty long. Right. So I'm just going to go to like key parts of the article. Okay. It also mentions is how he loses confidence too easily. Yes, that's the biggest thing right now. That's his biggest problem. Go ahead. Yeah, and also. They say even Nilakina's defense, which is still considered to be his NBA moneymaker, has looked suspect at times in terms of containing dribble penetration. That's a fact. Yeah. And um, let me see. What else? And that's pretty much it. That, those are the those are like the yeah. main standout points. The main standout points is the confidence. Yeah. The the the, the defense <clears throat> on penetrators has hasn't been as good as you'd like. Mm-hmm. Um and the shooting has gone down considerably. He doesn't yeah. even look at the basket at times. Mm-hmm. He just looks to defer. Yeah. And now, my opinion on um on this topic. To be honest about it, he does deserve to be on the list. I'm not going to front about it. Oh! You know, um, seeing him perform in preseason... And I think early into the season, like, I actually expected more from Frank because it looked like... He turned the corner. Exactly. I thought so, too. And he, it looked like he just regressed. And don't get me wrong, I still believe in Frank. You know, I'm not giving up on the kid yet because even... I think I was watching, um... I forgot what game it was, but Chauncey Billups was, um... Doing the game. Right. Com- the commentating. And he was like, you know... Because I think he was talking about... I forgot what guard he was talking about. But it was one of those guards where they started off slow for like the first two, three seasons of their NBA career. Then they they started to pick it up. And Chauncey Billups, too, was one of those guards where it was like his first three seasons or so in the NBA. Mm -hmm. He started off slow. And then he finally got it like his fourth, fifth season in the NBA. And he was saying, like, this is why I don't give up on young guards too quick. Yeah. Sometimes it takes time for them to really get it which is why I'm not giving up on Frank yet. But, I mean, if you want me to be honest about it, if you want me to be real about it, he has disappointed this season. So, yeah. So, I mean, he does deserve to be on the list. I I, I agree with you, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, I agree with you. He's kind of been disappointing this season. I feel like you. I've gotten... I saw signs. I saw signs of a heartbeat. Yeah. I thought Fizz might have been genius for a second because it seems like <laughs> Fizz, the, the season started right and Fizz had this guy starting at small forward. Everybody forgets. he, to, And he seemed like, all right, he might be getting his, his confidence up starting at small forward. He seemed like he was going to the basket more. Mm-hmm. It seemed like he was, his shot was good. In the beginning of the season, he was shooting around 40% from three. Yeah. Which is like an astronomical number. Yeah. He gets then he gets he switches into point guard, has a great game against Golden State. Yeah. And you're like, wow, this kid is blossoming right in front of our eyes. This is happening. This is it. Yeah. This is that that season. This is gonna take that next step. And then all it all goes down. The confidence goes, he looks shy, he looks like I don't know. I don't, I don't even see all the muscles he had in the summer. I don't even know if he has the muscles anymore, dog. Like, I don't, where did the muscles go? <laughs> is he, is he still oh, have the muscles? Man. So, so I'm guessing with Frank, it's like once the confidence goes, the muscles go yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. It's like where, where your muscles at, man? I, need, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even think he walks around with his shirt off anymore, dog. Oh man, I need that Frank back. I need yeah. <laughs> I need the swagger Frank back. And even his tips, like this, his the, the frost tips on his hair is not as brown. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh like, man, it's like he started changing back. Yeah, like yo, get your tips frosted, dog. Exactly, yo. <laughs> bring, bring, bring back Frank. Oh, man, bring back the drip from the yeah, summer, yeah, man. Yeah, bring back the old drip, dog. The frost tip drip, man. Yeah. Bring that back. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? It's kind of crazy because I'm, I'm upset that he got injured mm-hmm. because <clears throat> he got benched again after being, you know, having that, going through that drought. Yeah. And... I thought like I saw like a little heartbeat. I heard a do do do. I was like I saw the nug- the Nuggets game, right? That Nuggets game, yo. Yeah. I was like, I th- is he is he back? I think. Yeah. He's back. Like there's certain there's even certain things I saw him start to do in that Nuggets game that I didn't see him do mm-hmm. in the beginning of the season. Yeah. Um mainly the biggest difference, I don't know if people notice. 
even when Frank was playing well in the beginning of the season, he still looked a little stiff dribbling the ball. When he came back, it seemed like he was probing more. You know what I mean? He wasn't standing still in mm-hmm. one space yeah. like he's doing a dribble drill. Like he was moving and dribbling. It looked like he was probing. It looked like he started to feel a little bit more like a point guard mm-hmm. than just a guy learning to play point guard. Yeah. And you saw it in... What game was that? Not the Nuggets game. The the wait was it was it the Nuggets maybe it was the Nuggets game, yeah because I mean the Nuggets game was the last game he had a good yes. performance. You yeah. saw it in the Nuggets game the way he was attacking. I said like he was in attack mode a lot more and dishing it off to people. Mm-hmm. Um, he had a pretty damn good game in only eighteen minutes. Yeah, and he's like he was mixing it up, but I really just like I just really liked how even though he didn't shoot a lot, mm-hmm. he put pressure on the defense by driving to the hole a lot. Exactly. And I think in that Nuggets game, he had five assists to go along with the 10 points off yes. the bench. So. Exactly. In only 18 minutes. Yeah. So I was really like curious to, how, to see how he did in the Lakers game. I'm like, yo, I've never seen this type of attack mode Frank mm-hmm. that much this season. Maybe he turned the corner after that second DMP and he's going to add that attack mode to his game because to me when he sat down and just shot the ball and he just he just when his game was predicated on whether he shot the ball well or not mm-hmm. I feel like his confidence was wavering up and down yeah but I feel like if he's, it seems like for him to get in the game if he's attacking more maybe the confidence is not all predicated on if he makes the jump shot or not then maybe he can you know get his confidence because at least you know you're breaking out of defense yeah and causing some type of havoc so hopefully that continues. Yes. From Frank. And also, you know what? And with, with all that sophomore list, you, you see that Frank is on the list, but we also see somebody else interesting is on that list, right? Yep. Dennis Smith Jr. Dennis Smith Jr. The great Dallas Hope. Yes. On the list. <laughs> Not the great Dallas Hope anymore, though. I mean, listen. <laughs> I... I she. Listen, though, listen. I, okay. I know at least Instagram Knicks fans, uh-huh. they are still in love with Dennis Smith Jr. They don't, they believe he doesn't deserve, they believe he doesn't deserve to be on the list. Hmm. It's like why, they go through that list, it's like Josh, yes, mm-hmm. Malik, okay. Dennis, they don't believe he needs to be on the list. They don't understand why. Well, I can explain the reasoning <laughs> as to why he's on the list. So, um, yeah, I'm going to get to Dennis Smith Jr. Because the article does admit Dennis Smith Jr. hasn't been playing poorly. But this isn't the breakout his rookie season suggested was coming. Right. He's averaging fewer points, 30 points per game, and assists 3.9 points, uh, 3.9 assists per game as a sophomore alongside Luka Doncic, which that's the reason why he's averaging less. Yeah, Luka Doncic. Like, so <laughs> it's like, it's one of those things where you can't blame a guy for having less numbers when he has to share the court with somebody who's going to be more a ball-dominant point guard. Yeah, but here's but here's the kicker, though. The Dallas Mavericks are scoring 10.4 more points per 100 possession when Smith is off the floor. Mm. And they're saying while his jumper has shown signs of improvement, it still hasn't been reliable. He's also struggling. He's also struggled to figure out how to maximize his athleticism on drives making 50.5% of his attempts and only getting to the free throw line 0.8 times per game. Yeah. That's fewer than 36-year-old Tony Parker's averages. I mean, that's not even fair, though. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to say this. Like, I'm going to say this. Mm -hmm. That's not fair. That's not fair. Like, Tony Parker is, like, on a bad day, a legend. I know, right? (laughs) (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So that was like a weird. That was a weird cheap shot. Exactly. Because Tony Parker like led the league in drives to the basket. The, so it's like it's like it's, the <laughs> article also they also criticize his free throw shooting because he's only shooting sixty seven point seven percent from the line as a guard. Now that's valid. 
Yeah. That's valid. And they also say in his playmaking efficiency, a weakness dating back to North Carolina State, which is one of the reasons why I didn't want the Knicks to draft him. Right. Has also been troubling. He's the only NBA guard since 2014 playing at least 25 minutes with an assist percentage below 25% and a turnover percentage above 20%. Bruh. He don't pass the ball, bruh. No. He don't pass the ball. And I mean... So I know a lot of Knicks fans, I don't know the Twitter Knicks fans want them, but I know the Instagram Knicks fans, I have to dif differentiate. Mm -hmm. The Instagram Knicks fans want Dennis Smith Jr. Do you want to trade for Dennis Smith Jr.? No. Why? I, I think I already know why because you can't really explain yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I got, I'll just say, I'll double that. I don't want to. I, I don't know. If, I don't know if we're in the minority or not. Uh-huh. But I don't want him here. And there's a few reasons. One, f like you said, like, we don't need point guards who don't pass. Yeah, exactly. Like, especially with the type of offense Fizdale wants to run, where which which preaches ball movement. Dennis, I don't think Dennis Medjuda would really fit into that type of offense. There's a, there's a lot of different... And even, <laughs> like, the foul shooting 67%. I was mm -hmm. listening to this guy. Um, damn, I forgot his name. He's like a shooting expert, right? Mm -hmm. And pretty much what he says is, if you're looking at a guard, if you're looking to see if someone can be a good shooter in the NBA, a good sign is his free throws. If a guy can hit like a certain percentage on his free throws, like 70, 80%, 90% from his from mm -hmm. free throw, mm -hmm. and most likely he'll be able to be a good shooter overall in the NBA when mm -hmm. he puts it all together. Yeah. So even when you look at Frank, how Frank went on a tear where he didn't miss for, like, weeks. I think he had, like, 30-something <laughs> throws in a row. Mm -hmm. Like, you... you. That's a sign. Like, he, that's a sign that he's going to eventually be a good shooter in his league if he's shooting 80% from free throw. Like, he just has to get the confidence together and he'll put it, he'll put it all together eventually. Yeah. Desmond Jr., I'm not so much. It's going to be drives or nothing, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, to me, a guard who isn't, one, a guard who wants to pass. Mm -hmm. Two, a guard who can't play defense still is atrocious. Yeah, he's not, yeah, like, he's not a great defender. Yeah. Not great, atrocious. <laughs> atrocious. It's not, it is bad and it's atrocious. <laughs> He's really dog. Remember where Frank we, Frank played. Frank was giving Dennis Smith. Frank was blowing by Dennis Smith Jr. Yeah, that's saying something. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's saying something right there. <laughs> to the point of that, I still, I still remember. Yo, I still remember this. Screw the yo, screw Dennis Smith. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, I, was I, tight. I mean, I mean, I don't want that man's here, but I wasn't. I wasn't saying nah, screw him though. No, 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 no. <laughs> because I'm still mad. That when when Frank got by him, mm -hmm. and I, I'm not sure if he got an and one or not. Frank got by him, and he was so mad that Frank was giving him that work yeah. that he pushed Frank to the floor. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So yeah, screw him. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I was like, dog. That's who, and that was supposed to be his friend, allegedly. Yeah. yeah, that too. So I'm just like, yo, who is this guy? So, that, like, that's what. That's why Don's yo, taking his spot right yeah, now. Yeah, I was like, yo, why? Yo, Enes Kanter's on the bench right now. Get Enes off this bench, yo. Like, yeah. <laughs> I didn't I like that at all. Yeah, that was yeah, that was pretty um grimy. Yeah. So, yeah, and then I don't think he's a high IQ player. Not at the moment. And I, I'm not sure. Like. You got to be honest. Right now, he's a better player than Frank. Maybe. Offen offensively, off offensively, yes. yes. Offensively, offensively yes. yes. Scores more points, yes. Mm -hmm. um, defensively, ugh. Yeah. But overall, even to me, he projects to be like a lead guard, right? Mm -hmm. He doesn't project to be like a guard off the bench. No. I don't know if you can win <laughs> with him as a lead guard, like long term. It, it, it'll be interesting to see, you know, but I just feel like with the options we have at point guard right now, like, 
because Burke, we already we we already have Burke who's a scoring point guard. Right. You know, Moutier has shown the ability to score as well. Right. You know, then we have Frank who's like that switch up at guard at the point guard or or in the guard position period where you know he's a defender. Yeah. So I just don't I just I just don't see the need to trade for Dennis Smith Jr. I don't see it. I don't, I don't see yeah I don't see it either. But I like I understand that you don't know who's gonna be here next season. Yeah. So like. Boudier and Burke, we can end up with just Frank next season. Then mm-hmm. it would make sense to have another guard here. Yeah. Right? So you can make that argument why we will we have another guard here, period. Because mm-hmm. you don't know what's going to happen with these those, with those guys. But it's just like, I don't know if I want to invest in him long term, even though I know he has talent. Uh-huh. Like, I know he's a talented kid, but I don't... Like, right now, with our... With with the Moutier, Tim Hardaway, Knox lineup right now. Mm-hmm. We need somebody in there to play a lick of defense, yeah. one, and have, and just bring some calm. Yeah, Tim Hardaway Jr. is already jacking up stuff. Exactly. Knox. Oddly enough, Knox seems like he's progressing faster than Tim Hardaway Jr. on his offensive IQ, which is <laughs> <laughs> which is saying something. Yeah. <laughs> but 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 you just said it right there, like. I don't feel like we need a guard that holds the ball. Yeah. You know, like, I, I feel like if I feel like if anything, we need a guard that'll at least move the ball around. Exactly. Espe- especially, especially since we already have Tim Hardaway Jr. here, who is, is like, that's our guy who's jacking up shots for us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, realistically, I still want Tim Hardaway Jr. on the bench, realistically. Mm-hmm. But I, I know it's just not, I know, I know it's not going to happen. But I'm on the no side of things. Yeah, me too. Interesting enough... Oh, yo, I need to read some stats on this. Hold on. Bruh. <laughs> some stats on Tim Hardaway Jr. As I'm trying to pull these, pull it up. Only 23 players have averaged 16 shots to game mm-hmm. and shot below 40%. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. is on that list. Yeah, I think, uh, I think it's like I think it's like Tim Hardaway Jr., Kobe, uh-huh. Gilbert Arenas. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> damn. <laughs> Crazy. Bruh. But here's the Nick, here's the thing with Tim Hardaway Jr. Hold on, that must be Kobe like his early years. I must be. I, 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 <laughs> yo, Kobe went through a stretch where he was bricking. I'm not yeah, going to lie. That, that's what I'm saying. That must be the early yeah, years. Yeah, even in his late years. There was, there was a certain time when during the late years, uh-huh. he was bricking a minute. He was bricking a bunch. Yeah. When, you know, when they was losing. Yeah. And they didn't have Shaq in them with him. Like, mm-hmm. he was by himself on an <clears> island. <throat> yeah, yeah, he was bricking for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> he was a volume shooter. Yeah, true that. And still was better than Tim Hardaway Jr. I'm not, I'm not trying to put them in the same exactly, category. Exactly, yeah, yeah. But Kobe is much better yeah, than Tim Hardaway yeah, Jr. Yeah, yeah. I'm, much not, I'm not talking about, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> like, <laughs> but here's the conundrum with the Knicks, yo. Uh-huh. Knicks score 2.7 points fewer per 100 possessions without him. Interesting. So it's like as bad as he is... Mm-hmm. They play better on offense with him, even with him, even with him bricking. Mm-hmm. And I guess you have to attribute that to him going to the line, <sighs> which brings me to this other point. Because mm-hmm. I know we were getting to the trades, and I think I talked to you about a trade scenario. I sent it in the. Did I send it in the group chat? Yeah, you did. Okay. Dan Favor from the from the Bleacher Report. Mm-hmm. Thinks the Knicks can trade Tim Hardaway Jr. to the Utah Jazz. Yeah. He thinks he can trade Tim Hardaway Jr. and a second round pick Mm -hmm. for Ricky Rubio. And I believe Ricky Rubio is an expiring as well. Yeah. Expiring contract, yeah. I think I already know what you're going to say. Yeah, because um, I still got to get at these YouTube trolls too. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Again. Because people thinking that I'm crazy about packaging Tim Hardaway Jr. like a second round pick or another player to another team just to clear his contract. Look, 
the reasoning behind getting rid of Tim Hardaway Jr.'s contract, especially even over Courtney Lee's contract. I understand Courtney Lee is older, but Courtney Lee's contract expires next season. If anything, I, what I was trying to say is that if the Knicks are put in a winning situation next season, if they get a big-name free agent, Courtney Lee can actually help the squad, which is why I'm not really very pushing hard to trade Courtney Lee this season. I would still trade Courtney Lee. No, oh. but I, I I know, but I'm I know I'm just saying that if I had a preference over who I would want who I would want to trade, it would be Tim Hardaway Jr.'s contract. Because Tim Hardaway Jr. is earning 18 mil per year to, I feel you. for two more years. I know you're saying he costs more, so you want to move him. Exactly. And I, and I'm like, and if and if the end game is to open up cap space so the Knicks can sign a big name free agent, Tim Hardaway Jr. cannot be here on that contract. It's just simple mathematics. I I I get it. But I also feel like, <clears throat> like I said before, I don't think no one's coming here by themselves. Mm -hmm. So even if we end up moving Tim Hardaway Jr., well, then I, I don't think, mm -hmm. I think we will have to move two, two pieces to able to get two free agents here. Well, and if KD, well, I don't even think the numbers work with KD because KD mm -hmm. has like some, some astral nominal, like he's a, the veteran Supermax. Mm -hmm. But to even have a shot, I think we have to move both of them, which is why I'm like hesitant on. Like I would, I think I would, I I go back and forth with it. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie, I go back and forth with it, but I'm not sure if I'm ready to blow up the team if I know a free agent isn't coming. Mm -hmm. I want to know if a free agent is coming. Otherwise, I would like to keep still keep the short deals going. Mm -hmm. And still keep some remnants of, of of like a, a a team like familiarity, and see what happens when KP is there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. that, I think I understand. I understand though. Uh huh. I just like the the way the Knicks are playing right now. I just don't see. I don't see Kyrie or KD be like yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bring me to that team with ten wins. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't see it. But my whole thing is, is like, I just feel like, I guess I'm more of a risk taker. Where yeah. it's like, you know, if I if I know that there's an inkling of a chance, I'm going to try and set up my team in the best position possible to make it happen. Which is why, like, I wouldn't be, that's which is why I wouldn't be mad if the Knicks moved both their contracts or just Tim Hardridge's contract, whatever the case may be. Right. You know, my whole thing is, at the end of the day, I want the Knicks to win games, you know? So I just want to put the Knicks in the best position possible. And to, if for another team to take on Tim Hardaway Jr.'s contract because he's going to earn $18 million a year for, like, the next two seasons after this season, mm -hmm. the logic is that a team isn't just going to take Tim Hardaway Jr.'s contract because Tim Hardaway Jr. is not a major player. It's not like you're getting Anthony Davis or somebody like that where it's like, okay, we just need that big-name player. You don't got to give us no draft picks in return. yeah. For a guy who's a volume shooter like Tim Hardaway Jr. and he's not really top, you know, yeah, a he's top not player. top tier. You don't know, like exactly. So it's like you have to throw in something else for another team to take, whether it be a second round pick or another player. You yeah, know what I'm saying. Yeah, I understand. And interesting enough, this article talks about the Utah Jazz's cap situation, mm -hmm. and they're saying they're one of the teams who actually <laughs> kind of can absorb Tim Hardaway Jr.'s contract and still have some room left over to do a little bit of something. So they they like so that's why he feels like mm -hmm. this could be something for both teams, especially considering Utah Jazz is number is like the twenty first most offensive team in the league. Like they they rank number twenty one in offense in the league, mm -hmm. and for a team who has playoff aspirations, they need a punch. Yeah. Uh, Donovan Mitchell is kind of backsliding from last season, so they need mm -hmm. something. Yeah. And they feel like Tim Hardaway Jr. <laughs> give him a little something. And these small market teams too, like the the Grizzlies, mm -hmm. the Utah Jazzes, like the big name free agents don't really look at yeah, exactly. guys like that on the regular. So they are more likely to trade for scoring punches than to wait for a free agent to come to them because it just it just doesn't happen. Yeah, I mean, not many people are looking at. Oh, I want to go to Utah. Exactly. Ooh, <laughs> where the mountains and yeah, exactly. let's do it. <laughs> like, nah, nah, dog, no, it's not happening. Yeah, uh, I'm good on that. Yeah. So, 
I mean, if it was me, I would pull the trigger on the trade. It makes sense. I don't know. I, I'm mixed on Tim Hardaway Jr., though. I think that's what it is. Mm-hmm. I think I just mentally... Like, I want to believe in the guy. No, don't get me wrong. I don't I don't hate Tim Hardaway Jr. I know, like, I know. I, like, I like him. It's just that... Me, I hate his defense, man. I hate uh, yeah, it. I hate it. it. They all like, yeah, his defense, yeah, his defense isn't good, but I'm just saying, like... You know, like I'm not, I'm not emotional about Tim Hardaway. It's not like I hate the guy. No, like, no, no. I, feel I you, you know, like I like the dude. Yeah, I know just, you. You trying to get who? Who? I, you, who are you trying to get? Who's your I, idea? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get a KD, a Kyrie, or somebody like that, like that to come in. I just, like pick a K, like 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 yeah. like Nicki Minaj. Said. What? <laughs> pick a K? Yeah. <laughs> you know the pick a K. KD, Kyrie, pick yeah, a K. Yeah, That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Kawhi? Yes. Pick a K. Exactly. <laughs> That's so, what I'm saying. Oh, my fault. So um <laughs> so so it's like I just know that if 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 we if if the Knicks are to make that happen, they have to trade Tip Hardaway Jr. to the contract. That's yeah. the only way you're gonna make that happen. Yeah. I feel you. I just I just don't know. I feel if to me it feels like KD is our best shot. Mm-hmm. And I don't even feel comfortable saying that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna continue to speak it into existence. Okay, okay. all right, you and Kathy that to keep yeah. speaking. I don't know. I mean, what's up with the Celtics though? Oh, the and Celtics? Kyrie. What you mean, like the way they're playing? I I don't know. I just think I just think it's tough for them to like reincorporate um going to Hayward into into like. The lineup because yeah. like it's gonna it's taking minutes away from Tatum it's taking minutes away from Brown you know young guys that really showed out last season for the Celtics so I just feel like they're having a hard time really just incorporating everybody. Well, I uh, keep an eye on that Kyrie situation too. I guess. I yeah. Know. Even though I feel like that's I don't know that's that's a long fall from grace. <laughs> 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 I mean, if we get Zion, then maybe things start to change a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. But anyway, uh, let's see. All right, all right, all right. Ha! <sighs> you know what? I guess we can start talking about some games now, I guess. Okay. The Knicks played a few teams. I know we, we've been out for a while. Yes. But we played a few teams, and one of the teams that we played, we played Utah. Oh, boy. The Nuggets, and we also played the Lakers. Whew. Which one did I go to first? Well, like, do we yeah. want to do all of them? I don't even know if I want to go into. It. I'm tired. Of, like, we we be trying to avoid. I'm, I may be honest. <laughs> the, 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 we be the trying to avoid is... all these damn games. We lose all the damn time. Exactly. I'm tired of talking about all the damn losing. I don't, we want to talk about that Laker game though. Yeah, definitely. Because that's a win. <laughs> exactly. I mean, like the Utah game. I mean. What the Knicks fell by behind by by forty four at one point in the game, <laughs> Bruh. Um, box score. What Rudy Gobert killed us twenty five points, sixteen rebounds. Oh. Derek Favors had twelve points, ten rebounds. Oh. Donovan Mitchell had fifteen points. Dante Exum from the point guard position had thirteen points, thirteen assists. Oh. Who's my? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Korver had 15 points off the bench and then Dabo Cephalosha had 10 points, 10 rebounds. Bruh. Uh, and then Knicks, Tim Hardaway Jr., 18 points. Um, Luke Cornett, 14 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists. So he had a decent game despite the, despite the fact the Knicks got smacked. Smitty that. Um, Moody had 13 points, 5 assists. Violet, 13 points, 9 rebounds. Knox, 12 points, 5 rebounds. Trey Burke, 12 points. Yeah, and here's the thing about this game. All I'm going to say is this. One, yo, shout out to Knicks Film School because they put out like a nice little like video breakdown of the pick and roll defense and Mm -hmm. talked about how switching out Enos Cantor for New Cornette wasn't the end-all, be-all of our pick and roll defense. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, everything wasn't magically fixed because Luke Cornette is, is in the starting lineup now. Yeah. You still had freaking problems. Of course. Now, besides Enos Cantor being a problem on the defensive end, um, our guards are pretty bad. 
at pick and roll defense. Um, I forgot the stat, but I think our guards are like top in the league, like worst in the league at defending dribble penetration. Damn. <clears throat> yeah, which is the problem. As good as Moody AV has been, mm-hmm. it's the biggest problem with him starting. Yeah. And not only that, the video kind of illustrates not only the not only the need for like the guard to stop the initial penetration, but the wing players having to be in position to help the center stop rolling to the basket and be able to and they, and still be able to go back and guard their man from three. Yeah. So like everything isn't always Enos fault. This is what I'm going this is what I'm, this is what pretty mm-hmm. much the video was saying. Yeah. And it's funny because I it's funny because I would do these post game live shows and I would say I don't look at it. I know sometimes I feel like people look at a player and they have a reputation mm-hmm. and they end up being a scapegoat, right? Yeah. For everything. I would go on the show and go, okay, I'm look, I'm watching the game. I would say, hey, I know the pick and roll defense is bad, but today to me, it didn't seem like it was more on Enos. To me, I felt like today the guards just weren't doing their job and putting mm-hmm. Enos in a bad position. Yeah. Where it was a lose lose situation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then it's like if you're defending the pick and roll and the guard's not doing his job and the big man's not doing his job, of course of course you're gonna get slaughtered. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like pick and roll the thing about pick and roll is you need their team. All five guys have to be on the string, they have to communicate, they have to be able to rotate and get back to the man. Yeah. And the Knicks have not been able been being have not been doing that. But um, yo, shout out to Coach Fizz too, because I read something else that said not only will Coach Fizz be doing more of um playing the youth them more, <laughs> uh huh, but he's also going to stop all these suggestions because I think like the 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 uh the zone defense. Oh yeah, the zone. Yeah, defense. yeah, the yeah. zone defense. Obviously, it's not you know. Yeah, it's not. It's not that great. <laughs> yeah, it's not. I don't think this is really his suggestion, really. Uh huh. He's going to be more steadfast on implementing the defense that he wants to run. Win or lose, this is mm-hmm. where I want you on defense. Rotate here, rotate here. Yeah. Bow, 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 bow. You know, the funny thing is, too, it's like if you really watch NBA defenses nowadays, a lot of teams do play a zone defense. It's just that it's not like the 2 3 zone the Knicks were running. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's more like a player guards like a certain zone on the court, and they and, and it's like. If they if you switch, it's like you just take whatever players in your zone of the court. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But it wasn't like that two three college zone yeah, that the, you the, saw the, the Knicks, Knicks go like you know an official saying? zone zone. Yeah, like dog, but man. Well, I mean, I mean, it worked for a game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we stole a game. We stole a game because of that zone defense. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah. So that's that's the big takeaways from that game. Really, I, everything else is not even really worth talking about to me. Yeah, to but me I much. I did want to point out some team stats which which were pretty terrible though. Which, okay, which contributed to the Knicks getting smacked so bad. Lord, Lord, Lord. The Jazz shot fifty four. They basically shot fifty five percent from the field. The Knicks only shot thirty seven percent. The Knicks were out rebounded sixty four to thirty nine. Oh. Yeah, they was going in heels all night, man. And the Knicks got outscored in the paint, seventy to twenty six. Seventy to twenty six. Oh, dog, seventy is dog. Oh my god. Yeah, that that's was, bad, man. Yeah, that game was terrible. That's no D, de- no interior defense, man. None. Wow. I. Uh, Mitch, come back, please. Help yeah. Us. Please. <laughs> money, money, make it, Mitch. Woo, come back. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we definitely need some help. We <laughs> need you, man. <laughs> some we, defensive help. Word, we need that Louisiana defense. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Get out the boot. Yes, sir. Oh, man. So the next game. Nuggets. Yeah, Nuggets game. Yeah, the Nuggets in, game, we, 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 we... In Denver. It was close. It was all right. Yeah, um, we lost 115 to 108. Yeah. Oh! Now the Nuggets. I'm going to get to the Nuggets stats right quick. Um, Malik Beasley, 23 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists off the bench. Whose man's is this? 
Wasn't that, oh. hard? Wasn't that Hardaway's man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, Paul Millsap off the bench, 16 points, 9 rebounds. Oh. The big man of the game was Nikola Jokic. Oh, Lord. 19 points, 15 assists, 14 rebounds, triple-double. Oh. Too much of a good day. Yeah, and Craig had 13 points, 4 rebounds. Honestly, yo, I'm looking at, I was looking at a lot of these Nuggets players. I didn't know half the roster, to be real about it. Yo, man. <laughs> and, 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 and it's such a good team, yo. Like, it's it's crazy. Straight up team basketball, number one. Uh, my guy, in a sense, he, he picks people apart, though. He picks people apart. Yeah. And for our team, our team really... Our team isn't good at all. Like our wings aren't good at all ball defense at all. Yeah, I like. I feel like that's our one of our biggest like knocks. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. Especially. Yeah, this is maddening. They're not good at off ball defense, and when you have a center that can shoot threes, and then on top to have court vision, and then kind of to have court vision. Oh boy! Oh, well, as pretty much all off ball defense. I know the nuts. The Nuggets were making so many cuts, and Yoke and Yoke was just finding them. Like, yeah, I don't remember the box score off the top, but I think the Nuggets ended up with thirty assists. Uh, I can let me confirm that. Thirty six assists. Thirty six. Bruh. What, yo? That's insane. For real. <laughs> that's insane. On a good day, I think we had twenty six. Word. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when we like we're clicking on all cylinders. We exactly. got twenty six assists. <laughs> but yeah, I don't remember. <sighs> Uh, I don't want to talk about that much. Uh, the things I remember from that game really was at least Tim Hardaway Jr. seemed to have actually a, a good shooting night. I think he actually yeah, shot 50% from the field that yeah, game. 16 points, 7 to 12 from the field. Yeah. Which I... Yo, it was like... Doo, 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 yeah. doo. I was like, is there a heart? Is that a heartbeat I see? Yeah. Is the plantar fasciitis healing? Like, <laughs> it, 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 may, it might be. It might be. Gets a little, little we, the the little more rest in between. Maybe he, his shot is starting to come back. That's the one thing that keeps me. He's like, yo, if he has more rest in between some of these games, will he be able to shoot better? It really might be the plan of fasciitis. It really mm-hmm. might be. But anyway. Yeah. Um, Nick's stats. Oh. Cornette, 19.6 rebounds. Um, okay. I mean... I like the scoring from Cornette. Yeah. Kevin Knox, 18 points, four rebounds. Beast mode. Yes, Enos Cantor, 17 points, 12 rebounds off the bench. (laughs) Moody had 15 points, nine assists, seven to 20 from the field. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, Frank had a pretty good game off the bench. 10 points, 5 assists. Uh, 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 uh. I like I really liked how Frank played that game. Yeah, he played really good. And the, the difference in the game for the most part, the numbers are pretty even throughout. It's just the rebounding difference really killed the Knicks. Yeah. Yeah, Nuggets out rebounded the Knicks 68 to 47 this game. And um, I just want to touch on the Moutier factor, because this is the Moutier's welcome home game. Moutier wasn't even supposed to play this game. Mm-hmm. I, I think he was questionable with an injury or something like that in the plane. Um, guys like Dotson, mm-hmm. they were saying that they wanted to win this game for Moutier. Yeah. And you got the sense by watching the game that the guys really wanted it for Moutier, and, but also Moutier wanted it for Moutier. Yeah. Because it's, as good as he was, like he had nine assists, like I said earlier. Yeah. But he started, he was chucking a lot. Yes, he was. Towards the end of the game. And I felt like he could have passed the ball a little bit more in the fourth quarter. Yeah. But also, the, he missed a lot of makeable sh- shots. A lot of the shots he was getting, getting in the beginning of the year was coming in and out, in and out, all around the basket. So, <sighs> tough. It was, I mean, admirable. Yeah. Didn't expect to win. But it was admirable. I'll, I'll I'll take it. Yeah, it was a it was a pretty decent game overall. Just couldn't pull it out in the yeah, fourth quarter. Yeah, and, and Moody Danny had a close. He was kind of flirting with a triple double. Yeah, but the shooting wasn't. The shooting was just bad. It was like twenty something percent from the field or something crazy like that. 
But you know what? You know what else was interesting about this game? Kevin Knox's minutes. Mm-hmm. Kevin Knox played, I believe, 38 minutes. Yeah, he played 39 minutes. 39 minutes. Yeah. Me, which is like, Lord. <laughs> and, you know, matter of fact, the reasoning behind that is because Fisdale shortened his rotation. He only played four players off the bench, which well, is probably why Knox played more minutes. Who were the four, play- who were the four players? Only Cantor, Frank, Trier, and Dotson. That's all, that's all he played off the bench. And I I really get the sense that Fizz is trying to is trying to get uh is trying to get Knox to get over that hump that scoring hump because you know how oh, Knox yeah 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 you know how Knox has been kind of fading in the second half yeah and we kind of been speculating that it might be because of you know he's winded a little bit yeah not not in that tip top NBA shape yeah. yeah. So I I get the sense that Fizz is trying to force his lungs to grow. Yeah. And especially in a place like Denver. <laughs> yeah, exactly. With where the, where the air is yeah, thin. Yeah, the air is already thin. You you get the sense it's like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna use this as extended training camp again. Yeah. <laughs> You're like get your cardio up, young blood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I've also heard that his knees are kinda hurting too. Oh, Knox? Yeah, Knox's knees Knox has sore knees. Oh. Yeah. And Fizz thinks it's because he's growing, and some people come, and some people think it's because he's playing thirty eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, let let's hope that it is because he's growing. Yeah, <laughs> let's, just hope that. let's hope he's gonna be seven two now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he'll be he's gonna be like a seven for four like Kevin Durant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ooh. That'd be scary. Though. That'd be very scary. Yeah, especially yo his his release is so high. Yeah, that too. He, he can uh, unblockable. Yeah, and and, and and like I like I've been saying all season, like the dude's jumper is beautiful. Like if, oh, yeah, you, it if is. like if you watch it, yeah, perfect when he misses per, perfect arc and everything. Yo. When he misses, it looks like it's going in. Yeah, I think it's the arc. That's what it is. It's the yeah. arc that makes it look like wow. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like that's going wow. Exactly, yo. Like yo, I wish my arc was like you that. Were. <laughs> my damn arc. The only arc I know is at McDonald's. Like, Word. <laughs> <laughs> arc is going straight to my stomach. Yup. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> Next game, no. Finally, a victory. The vi- I- oh, first I want to start out that we saw um the return. <laughs> Trey Burke missed it still your minutes. Yes, made his return. I mean, he made his return in the Nuggets game actually. Nah, he didn't play in the Nuggets No, he didn't game. play in the Lakers game? Nah, because um, Fitz played a short bench. Okay, okay. Yeah. But he made his turn in the Lakers game, at the Lakers game after Frank went down. Yeah. Damn. But, okay, a little spark off the bench. Yeah, he definitely performed well. Um, As you know, when the Knicks win, which I know it, it's been a long time, so let me refresh your memory. When the Knicks win, I do not read the opposing team stats. Yo, I, I forgot about that, yo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that rule. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, I'm only going to be reading the Knicks stats for y'all. Um, Yo, the thing about this game was, I think there was seven Knicks players in double figures. Yes, there were. The first one being Tim Hardaway Jr. All right. 22 points, six rebounds. It's funny because I don't think he particularly shot well, 38%. Nah, he shot um, 7 of 18 from the field, 3 of 10 from 3. But he made some timely buckets. Yes, he did. Um, Enos Kant off the bench, 16 points, 15 rebounds. Big stat, though. Three blocks. Yeah, three blocks, two yes. And then, oh, I miss it still your minutes. Oh, I miss it still your minutes. <laughs> off the bench, 19 minutes, 16 big points off the bench. Busy, busy Burke. Yes, sir. Then Moutier had a bad shooting game, but he scored um 15, point, 15 vital points in the second half. Seven rebounds, six assists. 
pretty good numbers, man. He may just the shooting percentage is like, eh. But yeah, he's doing was, every he's doing a little bit of everything. Exactly. Kevin Knox, 14 points, five rebounds. He also hit a big shot in the in um down the stretch of the oh, Lakers. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> then we had your boy Dotson, eleven points, three assists, two rebounds. And another player who helped us win the game, Mario Hazanja, 10 points off the bench in 14 minutes. I got to do it because it's been a minute. Exactly. It's me, Mario. <laughs> Mario sighting, goddammit. Exactly. And we're going to get to the team stats. The Knicks shot terrible this game. Yeah. 37% from the field, 29% from three. Oh. But here's the big stat, though. Free throws attempted. The Knicks shot 41 free throws. It was like James Harden was on our team for this game. Whoa! Whoa! I'm the, guessing Hardaway is, is in that. Yeah. Because um, he's always leading in yeah, let's guessing. See, yeah, let's see. Um, oh, I don't have the free throw stats right here. I'll look it up later. Okay. Yeah, um... Yeah, but the Knicks made 34, 41 free throws. And the Knicks actually out-rebounded an opponent. They out-rebounded the Lakers 67 to 62. Oh, yeah. Where were you, McGee? Where were you? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, McGee, what's good? What's good, man? And, and, and here's another big stat. The Knicks only had six turnovers while forcing the Lakers into 17 turnovers. And the Knicks had 38 fast-break points. Pushing the pace. Yes. Pushing the pace. I think Knicks are 10th in pace. 10th? Oh, shoot, that's even surprising to me. I believe. I believe. They're even 10th in pace overall or, or 10th since November 27th. I forgot which, which one. I, I'll check that out, though. But yeah. the, the pace has definitely quickened since Moody has been in the starting lineup. And um, I'll say this. That first quarter... We were smacking the crap out of the Lakers. Yes, we were. And you thought it was going to be an easy win, an easy little crip walk win to the finish line. It didn't happen like that, though, because the Lakers fought back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Made things a little bit interesting. He was like, yeah. what, what the hell? What, what, what happened? Yeah, especially uh, in the third quarter. Yeah. The third quarter, I was actually being my pessim I was being pessimistic. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Third quarter came along. I was like, oh, we lost. Yeah, like, once I saw the Lakers take the lead later, then they went on, like, a 11-2 run or something like that. Yeah. The end of court, I was like, yeah, we, yeah we're going to take that L. We're taking that L again. <laughs> Matter of fact, I called it in the second quarter. I was like, oh, we're going to lose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but surprisingly enough, yeah, I proved me wrong. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. But um, they had, the Knicks had a really nice, fast start. And it's funny because Moody wasn't having a good game at all. But the third quarter, he seemed like he woke up and he had like a nice little stretch. Even though he had a good overall shooting game, mm -hmm. he he strung together some baskets to yeah. give us like some to to jumpstart that uh that third quarter for us when we were struggling. So yeah. shout out to Moody. But the big the big story to me was Tim Hardaway Jr. Somewhat mm -hmm. right, but Enos Cancer, Enos Cancer's defense. Yeah, Cantor really showed up on the defensive end for once. <laughs> like the he was rotating in a nice in the right spot. He was in the right place at the right time. He shut off a couple of drives. Um, so shout out to Enos Cantor. He had played pretty good defense. Yeah. Um, also, it's me, Mario. Mario comes in. Yep. Out of nowhere, I think the third quarter. Yeah, like late in the third. Late in the third, and plays damn near perfect. He shot one air ball. Yeah. <laughs> right, which was like, oh, man. But 75% from the field. Yep. 10 points in 13 minutes. <laughs> and what was big about that was that Fisdale kept him in the whole fourth quarter. Yeah. The whole four quarter, and it paid different. He played defense. Yup. He played offense. He did it all. Yeah, Mary. So, Mary was like, "You ain't re you ain't you ain't returning me to this nah. damn bench." <laughs> <laughs> did it, that's next question. Are you gonna play Mario the next game? It, it, it's tough because I mean, throughout the season, it seems like Fizdale's whole whole motto is like, "If you play good for me, 
I'm going to give you more playing time. Yeah. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, the if the Knicks put on, uh, I mean, if Fizda puts in um, Mario in the next game against Portland on Monday, I wouldn't be surprised. So, mm, that's going to be interesting. Like, you know, put Mario in. Trier has been struggling, dog. Yeah, Trier's been struggling lately, yeah. Trier has been struggling. So, it'll be interesting to see if the minutes for Trier stay the way they are. Mm-hmm. People, people are joking. It's like, yo, ever since Trick got his cash, he's been, he... <laughs> <laughs> yo, you're not hungry no yeah, more. Yeah, I ain't hungry no more. Like, I'm good. Got my contract. I'm yeah. good. But it's like, no. It's like, what happened? Like, is it, is it still a hamstring? Is it still like he hasn't gotten to the rhythm yet? Or, or you know yeah. what it is, too? Now yeah. that I think about it, like... It could be rookie wall. You read my mind. It could be the rookie wall. He's played a certain amount of games already, so he could have hit the rookie wall. Who, who yeah. knows? Yo, shout out to the team. We actually got a win. <laughs> yeah. For once? Yeah, beat you. No LeBron. Want, want. Got you thinking, hey, LeBron, we got a young squad. Mm-hmm. We beat you. Like, imagine if LeBron was on the Knicks. <laughs> That like LeBron, like like let's look what our team is without without LeBron. You see, you see, we beat you. See, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't I want mean, LeBron I mean, on the Knicks, and I, mean, I don't I mean, want LeBron on the Knicks. I'm just, I mean, just make that clear. I, I, mean, I mean, to be fair though, they didn't have Kyle Kuzma either, so it was like that doesn't fit my narrative, Ryan. <laughs> but, but, so 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 I mean, like the Lakers were ripe for the picking though. <laughs> that doesn't fit my narrative, Ryan. I'm trying to sell a narrative that we have a good team. Damn it, and you're messing it up with logic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, regardless, a win is a win, though. So yeah, I mean, yeah, win is a win. Because at the end of the day, it's like they didn't play in New York. We played in LA, and we beat y'all regardless in your home on your home court on so. your home floor. Damn it! Yeah, so our yeah. house. We should have clapped some powder in the air after. Word. That. <laughs> <laughs> Splash. Yo. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? It is that time, damn it. Yes, it is. Our favorite segment. Shout out to Az Collins, because he said this is his favorite segment ever on any podcast ever. Oh, word? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to Alex Collins on Nick's Twitter. Yes, yes, yes. For, for saying this is his favorite segment ever. It is time for... Oh! The Oopix. Oopics. Oopics. Ryan. Yes. I know I have a blue pick that I want. I definitely want to get to. Uh huh. I'm scared you're gonna pick it though. But go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> have any blue picks this week? I have one blue pick. I bet you it's mine. From the Knicks Lakers game. Oh, it's not mine. Yes. So the reason I picked this one is because the Knicks actually won this game. Okay. And it was the big play that led to the Knicks winning this game. The Knicks were up. 110-109 in the fourth quarter. Brandon Ingram has the ball. He tries to get the lead back for the Lakers. Oh. He drives to the basket. Lo and behold, you had Enos Cantor, the Stonewall <laughs> defender <laughs> at the rim. Ingram goes up. Cantor goes up with it with both hands. Rule of brutality. Rejected. Wait, wait, damn it. I can't read this. <laughs> <laughs> is it this? I think it's rejected. Yeah, yeah, we got it. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> yeah, we got, <laughs> it. got it. But yeah, rejected. And then afterwards, the Knicks go on a nine-two run to end the game and get the victory in LA. Oh, yeah. I'll take that one. That was a good one. Yes. Whoa, there was. There's a few oohs I want to get to. Actually, now I think about it. Damn it. Let me see if I can remember this correctly, so I can give a suspense for the people. All right, so I don't remember what. So Mario enters the game. I don't remember who he stole it from. Mm -hmm. I think Ingram might have been ball handling, whatever. Mm -hmm. But Mario ends up stealing the ball. Moody takes off down the court. Yeah. Right? He's running. He stops around three point line, gets the ball, and sees Ian's Kansas going down the court. Mm -hmm. Touch passes it between two Lakers defenders to Enos Cantor. Oh, yeah, I remember that play. Yeah, yeah. I remember that play. Yeah, that play was nice. For the score. Oh. Yeah, that play was nice. And I was like, woo! Yep. <laughs> woo! 
That boy good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Enos can't yo first first the touch pass from 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 Moody. Yeah, that was nice. Like I love like the instincts. That's like that's one of those places you're not thinking. Yeah. Straight off reaction. Yeah, exactly. Enos Cantor ran the floor hard. We got the points. I love that. Yes. Another ooh pick. Game on the line. It's tight, that Lakers game. Mm -hmm. Kevin Knox seems like he disappeared, but no. He's there. He's there this time. Right side of the court. Dribble dribbles. Floater off the glass. Yep, yeah, that play was nice. Oh. To score. But... All right, let me say my my best oof for last. Uh-oh. Ha, ha, ha. Now this is a story all about how somebody's life got flipped upside down. And it wasn't Frank's. <laughs> Uh-oh. The Utah game. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think Kyle Clover might have been on Frank. Oh, you already know right there. That's barbecue oh, that's chicken. Barbecue that's barbecue chicken, chicken, chicken right there. That's barbecue <laughs> rotisserie. <laughs> so, Carl Clover has the shaky knees a little bit on the defensive end, right? Yeah, stanky Kyle, leg. Yeah, little stanky leg. Kind of like Luke Cornette when he plays defense when he's at the foul line. Yeah. <laughs> he's like a little shaky bambi legs, right? I think Frank kind of, I think he hit him with the in and out. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I think he might have hit a quick in and out and quick hezzy. Mm-mm. Blows by him. The hell? Oh, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, 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 I know what you're talking about. Wait, wait, wait. We rewind it. We rewind it. Luke Cornett gets in position to set a pick. Uh -huh. To set a pick. So the defender is worried about being picked off. So, f yes, yeah, he did. So Frank sees Luke Cornett about to set the pick. He looks to his left like he's about to accept the pick. Fakes it. Goes in and out. Turns the pick down. Drives mm -hmm. past the first defender, mm -hmm. drive past the second defender who was looking to help. Yeah. And all you see is, what, how tall is it? Like 6'11", 7 foot. Well, Gobert? So, yeah, all go, 7 foot go, of Gobert. Go, Gobert's over 7 foot. Yeah, He's like 7'1", 7'2", yeah, seven like seven one, seven seven two, two yeah. of Gobert flying towards him with his long arms. And Frank just keeps going. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Puts on the speed. Yep. Jumps in the air and boom shakalaka bangs it. That's over his French like teammate too. Word bangs it on Colbert. Oh, posterized. Yup. And I knew then that my New Year was complete because I had a New Year's wish. That I wanted to see Frank bang it on somebody. And it happened. And it happened. Yes. So shout out to the Fresh Prince. Yes, yes, yes. And R.I.P. To Rudy Gobert. To Rudy Gobert. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I think I'm good. I don't, I don't got nothing else. Let me see. You got a Nuggets game. You got the Lakers game. Utah game. Nothing really happened except for that. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Now it is time... For the other favorite part of our show. Yes. Bruh. The bruh picks. The bruhs. The bruh. Bruh man from the fifth flow. Yes, yes. You already know what it is. I don't think I have any bruh picks this week. But I'm sure you I got, got... I got two weeks worth of bruh picks. Lord, Lord, Lord. <laughs> man, man, man. Shout out to Rock Cleveland. Man, 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 man. Even though it's only five, but still, it's, it's, it's within a two-week span. Okay. First bro pick, Raptors versus the Blazers. This is one of those games two weeks ago. Okay. It was on Shaq and the Fool. You see, this is why, you know, me. it's like me and Shaq, we're like intertwined. Oh, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say wave. Ex exactly. Like, when I spot something, it ends up being, it ends up being on Shaq and the Fool. But um, Raptors versus Blazers. Ibaka and Anuobi, they try to set double screen. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I've never seen this before. It was like they were on Dancing with the Stars. Oh, oh. How, they, how they, so? They locked arms. Oh. like And, and tried to set a double screen. Not once. Not twice. Three times. Bruh. 
Is this like what like what what come what 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 kind of technique? Is like the Rockettes? Are the uh, Rockettes in town? Or they start I, I, kicking and I don't know. Dun, dun, dun. No, oh. I don't know. They just locked arms and they were moving side by side, trying to set three double screens. I I didn't understand it. Well, all right, that's um that's a new technique that happened. Okay, yeah. I, Bruh. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if they were auditioning. I don't know if they were auditioning for Dancing with the Stars or the Rockettes. I don't know what it was. That, that's all right. Well, yeah. well, did, well, was it a successful screen? No. Oh. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, if it, well, if it worked, it would have been a... Oh! But, uh, yeah, guess was, not, so... Yeah. Bruh. Big, yeah, big bruh. <laughs> Next game. Lakers versus the Heat. Lonzo Ball, who has made numerous appearances on the bruh picks. Ah, oh, bruh. So Lonzo receives a pass from LeBron on his way to the rim on the fast break. Mm. He looks. He tries. He, he thinks that he has a teammate trailing behind him. Oh. So he feeds a no-look bounce pass. Really? That goes to a Heat player. Bruh. <laughs> I mean, he was open, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was open, but Lonzo, come on, man. You need to be more aware of your surroundings. Yo, remember last season when we was doing the, the, the free eight, the, uh, the, the, the Knicks Madness? We're going to do a Knicks Madness 3 this year. Uh -huh. but, uh, and he was talking about Alonzo Ball versus De'Aaron Fox. Yeah. Hey, remember I said, I think I like De'Aaron Fox more. Yeah, De'Aaron Fox is playing better, but I, I do give some credit to Lonzo because Lonzo has improved this season. It's just I feel that, you. You know, his shooting has improved. He, he's become a better player, but yeah. he still needs to shoot his free throws better. I, I just I just want to be on record for saying I, I like De'Aaron Fox more from the jump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just like Lonzo's court vision. That's why. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I like the, I like, I like the dog players. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, De, yeah De, De'Aaron Fox is definitely a dog. Exactly. Okay. Warriors versus the Blazers. Just Blaze. Yes. <laughs> So Draymond Green and Clay Thompson. Draymond Green was running a curl. Clay Thompson has the ball at the top. Mm -hmm. Clay Thompson sees Draymond Green running the curl. And he's like, you know what? I'm gonna feed Draymond Green the ball. So Clay Thompson throws the ball, and I don't know if Draymond Green was expecting the pass or or he just wasn't looking or whatever the case may be. But when Clay Thompson throws the ball, it hits Draymond Green in his face. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, That's funny. Yes. <laughs> balls to the face, balls. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. Oh, man. <laughs> Next, bro, pick. Oh, Knicks man. versus Nuggets. He used to balls in the face. Let's stop. Emmanuel. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you heard the joke, you heard it. If you missed it, you missed it. Yeah. <laughs> Big pause. Um, Emmanuel Moutier. Even though he's not the one who gets the bra. Okay. It's, it's the Nuggets players, but Imani Moody had the ball. Mm -hmm. So he fakes like as if he's going to post up a player. And this player on the Nuggets, his first name is... I don't know his first name, but the last name is Morris. Okay. So he guards Moody because Moody turns his back to him like he's going to post him up. But Moody fakes... That he's gonna post him up and he spins the other way. Oh, I saw that. That was nice. Yeah. So as he spins the other way, Plumley, who was supposed to be, I, I, I think Plumley and Morris was supposed to switch, but they didn't switch. Oh shoot. Plumley pushes Morris to the ground. Aww. As Moody drives by him for the easy layup. Bruh. Thanks for the assist, dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the assist. Exactly. And my last bro pick goes to Steph Curry. Lord. This happened. Last night, I don't know if you saw this, but remember James Harden against the Jazz. Oh, I know. Wait, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. For each step, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Wait, James Harden did the double step back on, Ru on Ricky Rubio. Yeah. So Steph Curry's like, you know what? James Harden tried it, so why not I try it too? <laughs> so Steph Curry dribbles to like the top of the key. Does a double step back behind the three point line and shoots it. The ref calls it for traveling. Ah! And then as he's going back up the court, he holds up a one three to his jersey 
Uh, Try to signify that Harden did this, and he uh, didn't get called for Travis. So why you call it Travis on me? Bruh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh man. man, that's fun. Yo, speaking of traveling, <laughs> <laughs> Desus and Barrow, right? Uh huh. Interviewed Charles Oakley, <laughs> and he was talking so much. Yeah, hey, I love Charles Oakley, yo. Yeah. Charles Oakley, if you want to come on the show? That'd be dope. Desus and Barrow, want to come on the show? That'd be dope. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Charles, right, proceeds to talk about him and Michael Jordan's relationship. Mm -hmm. And he says, Jordan traveled too much. <laughs> Every time Jordan made a movie, he traveled. And the rest let him get away with it. I go, I'll put on my shorts one leg at a time, just like Jordan does, and they can give him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> I had me dying, yo. Oh, man. You got, yo, if you haven't seen, if you have not seen that interview, the, the, the Bodega Boy, Daisy Samaro, interviewing Charles Oakley, Definitely watch that. Yeah, I, yeah, I definitely gotta go see that. Yo, and yo, the way he got at Joe King Noah. Oh man, <laughs> bruh. I was like, yes, yes, Oak. He was like, yes. He was like, you can't be from New York and come here and lay an egg, dog. You can't. Mm -hmm. he, it's funny. He also said that he lost respect for Noah. Oh. He said he wouldn't get into a reason why, mm -hmm. but he said Noah asked him a certain question. And ever since he asked him that question, he lost respect for him. I was like, whoa. Yeah, that must have been one crazy-ass question. Yeah, I was like, yo, what did he say? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, he ain't hear nobody. He ain't hear no more. Tell me, damn it. Exactly. What did Noah do? I was like, yo. But watch that interview, yo. Watch that. Most definitely. I have one more brother pick, though. Oh, go ahead. It's not basketball-related. It's not even sports-related. Okay. I have to give a bro. A whose man's is this? Whose man's is this? Everything to R. Kelly because I don't know if y'all been watching oh, that. On the, I, I don't no, know if no, y'all been, been watching that. On, I, I don't know if y'all been watching that on the last time. But this man is wild. This man is Mister Steal Your Teenage Girl. Dog. Oh man, this that's guy. a lifetime. Like I already knew he was back. I, I grew up in yeah. We grew up in the era when they were, they were selling the 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 sex tapes on the corner. Yeah. And you knew he was bad. You know, I always knew he was bad. I kind of canceled him, R. Kelly, in my mind mm -hmm. for a while now. Yeah. Every now and again, a song comes on, and I'm just like, oh. Yeah. I still like it. Then I'm like, no, R. Kelly, no, don't do it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, yo, oh, man. That, that Watching that, man, is depre it's depressing. Word. I was man. like, yo. It had me feel, dog, like, dead, like, serious. I, I'm scared to have a daughter, yo. I'm scared. That documentary alone, like, for I would real. go to jail. I would go to jail. Exactly. Like, like parents ain't seen their daughter for three years? Like, I would go to jail. Like, yo. I'd be in jail right now. KOT show shut down. It'd be Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Like I, like, I could not imagine what those parents were going through, yo. Like, ah. Uh. Yeah, man. It's big, yo. Big, ugh. Yeah. I, be a big brother to R. Kelly. Big yeah, bro. huge, bro. Jeez. Whose man's is this? Whose oh, man's is that of a lifetime? Yeah, he all. Needs, that man needs to go to jail, for real. For real, like, I'm, I'm it's hoping, crazy. I'm hoping. I'm hoping they give him like they did OJ, where they find some technicality years later. Exactly. That's how all I can hope for right now. Yeah, that man needs to serve some type of time for all that shit he did. Like, that's crazy, man. Yeah, yo. <clears throat> yeah, I know this is a crazy segue. But I, yeah, I, I, I have to get off that topic. I'm sorry. For, yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, because because we, we we could be here talking forever about this. Oh so. man, it's yeah. depressing. Yeah, I don't know. It's, that's what it is. Exactly. But yo, I, I never asked. I I meant to ask you this. This, but I never got to it. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Butler. Oh, Jimmy Butler. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Jimmy Butler is causing havoc. It seems like he's mad, being od disrespectful over there in the 76ers land, <sighs> talking to the coach, and you. But it's like you was talking about how you would love Jimmy Butler here on the Knicks. Uh huh. At this point, if it doesn't work out with the 76ers, uh huh, would you want Jimmy Butler here? My mind hasn't changed. Your, uh, mind, your uh, mind is telling me telling you yes? Yeah, my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, my mind is telling me yes, and here's why. Jimmy Butler's a dog. Like, he's a true dog, and I like his competitive spirit, and I feel like with the type of players Fisdale likes, he likes the competitive type. 
I think Jimmy Butler would fit in. This is why I think Jimmy Butler's raising hell in Philly. Because the two superstars he plays with, Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, they're young. He's no... What they said was he wants more of a traditional offense, of a traditional pick-and-roll offense, and they're mm-hmm. not doing that. Oh. So he has a problem with the way the offense is being run. Yeah, but 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 here's, but here's my point, though. I feel like in Philly, there's nobody to check him. Because the two big stars on Philly are Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, and them, those dudes are young. They're not going to check Jimmy Who's Butler. Who's checking him here? Hmm? KP? No. But, <laughs> but, 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 Butler but, but, be but, the biggest personality on the Knicks. But I mean, like, but my thinking is, like, I'm not, I'm not bringing Jimmy Butler here if it's by himself. If it's by himself, no, no bueno. Okay. But if, if we bring him here with somebody else, I would hope that the Knicks would at least sign a veteran that has a strong voice. That's what I'm saying. I don't you know. know. That, like, that's, that's, that's the only way I would bring Jimmy Butler here. If we sign a veteran that has a strong voice, I could actually check Jimmy Yo, Butler. I'm just saying, if Jimmy Butler's here, no one's checking Jimmy Butler. That's all. <laughs> this is brace for impact. I, I know, but that's why I'm saying I hope if he, I hope that if the Knicks do sign him, they bring in another big-name free agent and hopefully sign a, like, a veteran that can check people and be like, Yo, you're out of line right I now. I can see Jimmy Butler and Cantor going head-to-head, head, yo. Because right now, yo, shout out to Knicks Film School, too. I know we tried it out a couple times. Um... I listened to one of their podcasts. They had Rebecca Harlow on. Knicks Film School? I mean, can you hook us up, please? I mean... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> so, Jonathan Macri, yo, it's good, man. Yeah, yeah you cool. know... We yeah. both Jonathans. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we, would, we would like to interview yeah. Rebecca, Rebecca um, Word. Harlow, too, you know? Word. Now you know what JL stands for. But yeah. anyway... <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca Harlow was saying... It's like the, I feel like this is the second part of the podcast. The, yeah. the Rebecca Harlow was kind of saying that um, she's been around a lot of good, a lot of NBA teams. Uh huh. Like I forgot how many teams she mentioned, but she mentioned like four or five or something like that. People people forget that she used to be with the Nets too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we forget we forget that though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we still love you, Rebecca. We still love yeah. you. Yeah. But, <laughs> but um. She was saying how amazing it is that even though the Knicks are losing so much, mm-hmm. that the camaraderie is as high as it is. She says it's kind of unusual mm-hmm. to see like how much everybody is for each other as much as they are. You got to put that on Fizz. Yeah, so... Jimmy Butler coming here. Mm-hmm. I can just see him like coming here like a big wrench and just like rock music playing. Just, and, 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 just like, <laughs> like just throwing the wrench and all the moving gears and stuff starts exploding and he starts laughing so maniacally. Ah, and then leaves and everything just blows up. I can see him like thinking that. Like I, I, I can see. I don't know. I'm scared. I'm mm-hmm. a little scared. I knew you need a dog to win championships. Yeah. But I'm, a, I'm a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. Well, I I understand the nervousness. It's not like bringing Jimmy Butler here is without risk. Like it, it is a risk, you know, if, if the Knicks were to bring him here. But I'm just I just I just like the dog in him. That's all. Like, and I just feel like if he's with another superstar player, like it, you you know, Knicks Knicks may have a shot, especially with KP here already, and then you have Kevin Knox who's developing, and then this upcoming draft they if they draft somebody like Barrett or Zion too, you know, right there is there like, it is yeah. that, that's a squad right there. Zion. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. I feel you. I feel you. All right, cool. I'm just, I actually have like another question, but I'm going to leave that alone for next episode. Right. <laughs> so, and I'm pretty sure you're going to say yes to this answer too. All right. Actually, Tom, you know, Tom Thibodeau. Oh, yeah, got fired. Yeah. Tom Thibodeau got fired. Yeah. Hey, me, he's another assistant. Hmm. Yeah, you know, you can improve, improve the defense a bit. I'm just saying. Yeah. Extend that hand. Yeah. Hey, Tom. And, and you already know, like, at one point, Tom did want to coach in New York. I'm just saying. I don't want him to be the head coach. Yeah, he could be, in a, he could be an assistant. I, just, just yeah, head of he, the defense. He could be the head of the defense. Yeah. I would love that. For real. But, um, yo, that is our show. It is the G&J show. Ryan G&J show. Yes, yes, yes. In effect. We don't know what other guys are. <laughs> 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 but, um... I think Kathy says she'll be back next week. We'll see. 
Hopefully. Hopefully. Yo, Kathy, man, there's other people. Yo, listen, man, you need to take your spot as the top woman of Nick's podcast right now. Oh, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. You're being challenged right now. Yeah, you're being challenged. <laughs> 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 but yo, shout out to Kathy and shout out to Edson as well. He's doing his rapping. Yo, if you have not checked Edson's freestyle, yeah, yeah freestyle Mondays, Monday, yeah. Yo, definitely check that. I've been listen, man. I've been trying to get Edson to freestyle on the show since since it started. I know, man. <laughs> I'm like, I think he freestyled once, but I really want him to like show the people what's up. Exactly. They see the beard and they see, they hear the voice. They don't really know though. Exactly. <laughs> they don't really know the bars that come. They don't know. They exactly, really don't know. but but for, but for now, until he actually does freestyle on the podcast or, or on the show, uh, matter of fact, um, check out his Instagram at Edson Sean E D S O N S E A N for those freestyle Mondays. Check out the talent. Word. Yes, yes. And you won't be disappointed. There you go. Bars for days. Yes, bars. All right. It is time to go. It is the end of the show. Always, 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 you can see us on the Nick of Time Show.com to see all of Ryan's amazing work, plus yes. others. Yes, yes. Um, You can also <coughs> see us on YouTube, youtube.com slash the Nick of Time Show. Don't yes. forget the the. Exactly. That's where you can watch this recording right now. Right. And you can see this lovely merch that I have. Yes. Poor Zingod hat. Sold a few. Could buy a few more. Yes. You trying yes. to get some cameras? Most definitely, so you can see us in our full glory. That's right, that's right. <laughs> but also, you can listen to us as soon as the show drops on SoundCloud.com slash The Nick of Time Show. Yes, and we're still on Dash Radio, too. Word, shout out to Dash. Yeah, Tuesdays at 3 p.m., nothing but net channel. Mm-hmm. And you can also check us on iTunes.com. I don't know what the, the handle is for that. But if you Google it, yeah, it'll yeah, show up. Yeah. Just, just, <laughs> just search the Nick of Time show. There it is. <laughs> we are there. Yes. Um, I guess uh, and you can find me at on Instagram, too, at J. Ellis Draws Things. That's J-E-L-L-I-S Draws Things. I haven't drawn anything in a while, though. But I actually want to draw some things. Yeah. I want to draw some more merch. Moody A merch? Mood merch, definitely. And I want Mood and Trayer, and maybe even Luke. I'm thinking about doing Luke merch. Yeah, well, Luke's earning it so far. Mm-hmm. I want to do Dot merch, too, but mm-hmm. I haven't figured out, like, an angle. Oh, for Dotson? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, that's where you can find me. Where can they find you? Um, they can find me on IG at Sir G is chillin'. Sir G is chillin'. That is S I R G is C H I L L I N, and you know, as Jay said, um, I post um articles, so you can you know you can go to the website thenickatimeshow dot com to read them. Word. Yeah, and also I'm the Knicks beat writer for TSJ one hundred one Sports, so you could definitely check that out too. Like I always post the link on my um IG profile, so yo you can check that out too. Right, right. And if you don't know, all the merch is designed by me. It's mine. Exactly. I mean, it's it's my design. I mean... Yeah, graphic design, drawing, the artist. The artist. Yes. Yes, the logo. Exactly. The KOT logo. The website. Yes. Hold it down. So, I mean, if you need anybody to design anything for you, that's the man to go to right there, Jay Ellis. I might do it if I have time. I'm not yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm mad busy. <laughs> and, and if you supply the money. The monies. <laughs> it might happen. Yes. That's a might. <laughs> it still might not happen. Cause, but, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. That is our show, damn it. Yes. First one of the new year. Happy New Year, everyone. Enjoy your New Year. New Year, new us. Yeah. That is all. We out. Peace. Peace and love out to where you from. What other money will they ever come?